Hi, my name is Nora Abastead and I'm the founder and CEO of Craft Jam. My plan today is to talk to you about our last year, what we learned from our pivot in the COVID age, and also how Eventbrite was part of our adjustment to this new world. Then I'll be giving you some specific actionable ideas. But first I wanna talk about the background of our company. And then I'm gonna give you some lessons. So the terms re-knit and reweave are very important to me. We are about social crafting and the benefits you get from that. I've been a long time believer in that. Craft Jam is a crafting community where we teach watercoloring, embroidery, needle felting, macrame, calligraphy. We have over 60 workshops. We have special foundation, absolute beginner workshops. And then we have these beginner intermediary structured workshops, drop-ins. You can just come to practice your skills or deepen your skills. We are all about real time, real people and real community. I'm a serial entrepreneur. I've been in this space for almost two decades. I started the largest sewing community in the world with over a million members. I raised money to start a kind of Facebook for makers and then eventually started Craft Jam. Community building and hosting are my personal and professional passion. And there's even a chapter of me or about me in Priya Parker's book, The Art of Gathering, our keynote speaker here at Reconvene. Hi, Priya. Nice to see you here. So I've been launching and leading creative communities for 15 years, but the last year was really the hardest. Craft Jam started as an IRL business because members of our online communities were eager to meet in person. So we started with a few events per month in a co-working space, and then we grew it to thousands of events all over New York City. We um, were hired by Brian Park. We were doing events on rooftops of hotels and in our beautiful, cute little studio on Sullivan Street between Prince and Spring in Soho. Well, and then COVID hit. On March 12th, 2020, we sent out an email to our customers saying that we'll close the studio for just a month. Well, that was over a year ago and obviously we never opened again. I'm sure many of you guys experienced something similar. Often when you close a door, a window opens. This is actually a poster I made to hang in the window of the closed studio. Goodbye Soho, hello internet. And I felt there was something new that was maybe something good. Maybe a dead end, but maybe the sky is the limit. We weren't sure what was coming. But I was super excited for the challenge. I was really pumped to start creating and building again. Our most challenging year actually ended up also as one of our most rewarding, personally and professionally. And I'm going to take you through some of the challenges that we faced and the changes we made and share what we learned along the way. And I hope it's gonna be helpful to you. So right away, we made a to-do list. How can we shift online? I'll, I'll break down the process for you. It all happened from our bedrooms and kitchen tables, right? A bunch of things had changed. So how we meet, I mean, this picture is actually our first meeting with a team online. I was at my in-laws home where we camped out for 15 weeks and you know everybody just was dispersed all over the country. Cash flow was definitely our biggest challenge. Our best months pre-COVID was the month before COVID. 
February 2020. I remember we had this weekly calendar in on the door of our studio and I just kept enjoying writing sold out on all the events. And we had, I think daily, we had like five or six big events all over New York City. So when we send out the newsletter to say that we'll um, start IRL workshops again on April 14th, 2020, haha. <laughs> um, I, I couldn't rely on that because I had to, I had to make payroll. I had a team to pay, right? And so we just started right away. We didn't wait a minute. And what was super helpful was this blog post from Eventbrite that I discovered where they explained step for step how to connect Eventbrite with Zoom. And within two weeks, we were online. Z Zapier became our best friend, no question. So our online business wasn't set up for online, right? I mean, our IRL business wasn't set up for online. We suddenly were global. Uh, and what about shipping? So this is a picture of myself in my um, sister-in-law's childhood bed childhood bedroom packing calligraphy kits so um, me and the um, postman there became best friends I can assure you anyway some specifics for you so we had to change we lowered our ticket prices and that was of course challenging because we needed the cash flow luckily we were able to get a PPP loan and we also fought hard to renegotiate uh, our contracts. And then the growth hit us. Fast forward to December 2020, we had our most profitable month ever in the history of the company with 180% uh, growth year over year. We weren't just in New York anymore. Suddenly we were global, right? But that also meant we were having to rethink from being a local business to a global or national business. We used to have all these spikes in sales when Time Out New York or Thrillist would write about us. So we had to rethink SEO, PR. How do we talk about ourselves? We're not a New York business anymore or just a New York business, right? There was a huge opportunity now that we could cater to actually people who left, who still wanted to be part of our community. And to people who were never able to be part of co our community, who had heard about Craft Jam, maybe who had visited New York, but couldn't attend any of our local events. And they now came to our virtual events. One of the biggest changes probably was in our operations, where we shifted from these big, heavy boxes with supplies that we used to drag to all the events and then had to repack to these little cute light pouches that we could just ship in the mail to people. Um, that's actually something that uh, we're keeping for uh, rolling out IRL now, right? Another um, point where we had to change was our setup. So teaching IRL is a lot about talking and smiling and laughing with people and demonstrating with your hands specific crafts, right? So we understood quickly that we needed two cameras. One, so you would still see the person because it's about social crafting, right? Anybody can go to YouTube and a close up for your hands. So we ship these mobile arms that you can see in the picture there to all our jam masters. We used to pay a lot of attention how the tables were set up. There was some, you know, intricate art direction, how to place the scissors and the brushes, etc. Now, all we had was a screen. So we designed a welcome note that people saw when they logged on. So they knew, oh, we are at Craft Jam, right? Logo and, you know, some writing on it. And we ask our jam masters, our teachers to have a tidy background. I don't personally like virtual backgrounds because I think they make everything a bit distant but make sure maybe you have something personal in the background, right? Huge change also how we work together as a team, remote working, right? So we had to rethink our communication. 
we would set up detailed meeting agendas and organize and collect and distribute our info in information in new ways. Airtable became our best friend and Slack, of course. But we also had to be more conscious about breaks. Meetings used to be a chance to step away from the computer. And now meetings means even more screen time, right? Um, so we devised two, two meeting free days, Tuesdays and Fridays now, no meetings. It's amazing. I also started blocking out time for lunch, meditation, and sports, just making sure that everybody sees this is what we should do to keep our emotional and physical health intact. So things we kept, as I said, was the pouches for IRL and the streamlining uh, of our logistics really improved our margins. So this was a great side effect. And so we'll keep that. Also the constant questioning, right? Just because we've done things doesn't mean they're right. We're much more agile now. We're ready to drop things and just move on. Finally, we're returning to events, albeit slowly. For us, our 300 square feet studio just won't work anymore. In the past, people weren't coming because they had busy schedules, but now attendees are looking for more. Keep it local. People's comfort in doing things is an ever expanding circle, right? First, we wanna to reconnect to what's closest to us. And so there's a huge opportunity for local and intimate events. Connect with people in a local context. It is part of our IRL strategy actually. So look for local settings that are convenient and feel safe. Definitely cater to groups make it easy to buy in groups. People miss their families, they miss their friends, they miss their colleagues. So also think about icebreakers for new colleagues and new neighbors. People are moving across the country, right? So how do you make sure they can gather and, 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 and feel comfortable speaking to others? Let people talk. We have been alone for a long time. And video is tiring, it's just not cutting it, right? Let people be heard and make sure you design the space and time for connections. So people can share feelings and experiences. Maybe have a question of the week. That's what we do of the day. You know, We give a sneak peek on social media so people can prepare and, prepare it and they can say, hey, what is your answer to that question? When you think about hybrid events, don't restrict yourself to either or, right? IRL means in real life, but online is real too. For us, it was a life savior to be online. Rather think about how to provide emotional safety in any of those spaces, right? It's not just about physically safe, physical safety, you know, put on your gloves, your gel and your mask. Make sure you brief the team and the organizers so they know that they should have a tone of caring and compassion. Maybe give them talking points so they're comfortable. I'm a big fan of giving instructions like dress codes, and I'm not talking about, oh, you have to be formal. It's more about maybe a favorite color or bringing something like an heirloom because it's a great icebreaker. People want to belong and they want to connect. And if you're transparent about those kind of rules, then they can participate, right? I also love giving responsibilities. And so these kind of rules that I'm talking about or responsibilities, it's really not about restricting people or ordering them around. It's really about a feeling of belonging. So shy people, if you tell them, I do that at dinner parties, right? I tell somebody, you're the minister of water. So they have the right to go to somebody and say, hey, you want water? And then they can talk to them. That's their icebreaker. So the future about gathering has forever changed, right? We want to make sure that we can gather safely, physically and emotionally. And there's a need for real connection 
for authentic ones. And I think those kind of connections, they can outlast any future crisis. People will also be more open to new connections with new people, right? They have to. I mean, one of the biggest changes COVID brought along is really that people more than ever left their homes and moved to new cities to find their luck or towns or villages. I feel like about half of my acquaintances, friends and colleagues have done that. So we're mixing the country and old friends are leaving and future friends are arriving. So these people will want to find communities. They want to make friends and find love. COVID was a lonely time and our gathering muscles have atrophied. Even worse, we are insecure how to be together, physically be together, right? Can I ask about personal health information? Are you vaccinated? Do I shake hands? Do I hug? Do I kiss? Do I blow out these birthday candles? It's complicated. So we can't just pick up where we left. We have to regroup. We have to rethink. We have to redesign so we can reconvene healthily and happily. Even though the virtual events market has now been around for a year, it's still very much wild, wild west. The best practices that I have shared today are very specific to my organization and our community's need. So event organizers are approaching virtual events differently, which in turn is creating varied audiences and their expectations when it comes to content and virtual platforms, right? This ambiguity actually creates huge opportunities for event creators to try their hand at organizing an entirely new and engaging experience that can only be fully appreciated virtually. I think the most important, the most important thing is to stay true to your core and values. And then you find a platform that helps you deliver that, right? So, or platform. So virtual events shouldn't be viewed as a competition or as a substitution to your in-person events. They're complementary. This new event medium targets a completely different audience. And by hosting both in-person and virtual events, you'll encourage a crossover between the two and giving more opportunity for more customers, but also for longer relationships with your existing customers. If you have an existing business, explore how you can utilize the same systems, event partners or other business components to accommodate virtual events. A pivot is much easier if you have an existing infrastructure that you can tweak, and maybe you create some new services or products too. I think it's really important that you find the right virtual event platform or platforms that fit your business needs. There's so many out there. It's, it's overwhelming. Just look for the features that you need, not just because something is hot. Um, so I had to do this myself, right? And there are several types of events that we lead that would be best served on different platforms. The technology overload is confusing to most customers. So try and simplify the process. The goal is to reduce the customer inquiries. You want to make it super easy for them to join. And obviously on the topic of technology, pre be prepared to fail or that technology fails you. But look at what is not working or what might not be working and then find a way to document the issues and build in redundancies to mitigate the problem. Over communicate, right? Tell your audiences things might happen and then have a way of still making them feel happy. So for example, if they can find the microphone, you know, turn on the microphone, camera, whatever, tell your event creator, hey, it's okay to, um, reschedule for another event and we'll refund you or you know reschedule you. So the most important thing is that you have the best of your customer in mind so they can trust your brand for a long term. Your work really matters. It matters more than ever and event creators are the people that guide people back into social life and help them feel comfortable and safe. 
So you will, you will feel appreciated and safe. And if people love the experience with you, they'll stay loyal forever, right? We are creatures of habits. And just like we became accustomed to staying at home, we'll go out again. So get back into the game or stay in the game and organize and make people happy.